everybody, this is Amanda from Amanda's Budgets. I'm here to do the most important video in my all-time videos on YouTube. You're probably wondering, what in the heck are you talking about? We're going to talk about growth. We're going to talk about being humble. We're going to talk about how this last five years has really humbled a lot of us financially, emotionally, physically, mentally, and how I've watched a lot of you guys grow. I watch a lot of you on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I am a content creator myself. If you're not a content, content creator and you are a viewer and you've made comments, I've watched you grow too. So, when cleaning out my apartment that I lived in for three years, almost three years, I found a amazing relic. This is something that is so dear to me. It goes up there with family pictures, personal items I cannot replace, family memorabilia, all those types of things. You know, that box that you have in your maybe closet, maybe it's in your storage, maybe it's in your garage, maybe it's in a plastic storage bin, maybe it's in a cardboard box, but this is something I wished I had when I started my YouTube channel, but today is the day I'm going to share with you the beginning of where Amanda's journey ended in some regards and what it took for me to begin this journey. So let's go ahead and pull that out. This is something I thought was lost forever, but I was cleaning out the underneath the stairs storage when I found this. This is my 2020 budget book. I utilize this, you guys, like it was the Holy Bible. This is something that I carried with me every day at work, in the car. I cried writing every single budget in this notebook. I struggled to begin my debt-free journey. I struggled to get myself together. How many jobs was it going to take, Amanda, to get it together? And just to put it in to perspective, this was one of my most completed budgets. This was when I really started getting it together. So, this was my budget, you guys. You're not going to see anything fancy on it. And this is, this is turning out to be pretty raggedy, okay? Because I, I carried this with me. I, I worked at a sandwich shop at the time, and the girl that I worked with thought I was a nut job because she was like, girl, why are you walking around with this notebook? Because I wanted my life to change so badly that this was my first genuine, fully funded, written budget where I literally started getting it together. I had been budgeting for the year previous, the whole year previous, and I had good budgeting months and I had bad budgeting months. I had budgeting months where I was like, I am sleeping in my car. I can't do this anymore. I need to feel better about myself. So I would go bring myself out to a nice dinner. Yeah, you heard it. Nice dinner. If you watch me for a while, you know I am a cheapskate. Nice dinner. Okay, so this was amazing to me. 
And then there's a section in here, because I, I have to be careful what I show, because it does have some personal stuff in here from Dutt. This section here, this is what really started the game changer. So in 2021, I would say, I, I really, I mean, I was ripping pages out of this thing. I was crying. I was like, I did that budget wrong. I didn't make that budget. I'm ripping it out. I wish I would have not done that. Because I could have shown you all of my little budgeting mistakes. Even though, if you just saw the budget, I had a car payment, car insurance, my phone, food, and pet supplies because I had my dog. Me, my dog, and the wind was all I had at that moment. So, this debt journey was written on basic lined paper. There are a few numbers I remember in my adult life. Things that have been so traumatic that I cannot forget them. And even though I went back through my debts that I paid, this was before my car payment, this was before buying a new car, all those things, before I got keys, before I held keys in my hand, I remember the very first numbers of my life that changed my life. I needed $224, you guys, to not be evicted. I had struggled in early 2017 to really get my stuff together. It was a shit show. I had been working a good job. I was looking to buy a house. I had all these plans and then I lost my job. Then I went to working really cruddy jobs like I had previous to my good job. I worked at a call center. I made good money. I worked overtime. I was ecstatic about how things were going. But then I started working fast food and part-time retail jobs. And then it came down to it. The holidays were coming and I needed $224. I didn't have family to borrow it from. My ex at the time, my, my, uh, my youngest son's dad had already borrowed money from his family to keep our electricity on. It wasn't like I was overspending. At this time, I didn't have any credit cards. I didn't have anything other than a bunch of crap on my credit report that meant that my credit was down, all the way down to the point where I was hopping from one utility to uh, one phone company to this internet company to that internet company. Oh, this company's cheaper. Let's switch. Don't pay that other person because we only have enough money for this person. It got so bad that I only needed $224 to remain in my apartment. There was no addiction. There was no alcoholism. There was no um overspending of money. I didn't have any money to spend. I was robbing Peter to pay Paul to hopefully make it to the next paycheck because I was making little to no money. Okay? So $224 is the very first number I remember. And that's unfortunate. That eviction lasted me so many years of heartache. I lost everything. I lost not only my house, but my belongings, my memories. I had lost so much with friends and family, even my immediate family, to the point where it was just my dog and myself, and I was living on a piece of property, okay? I haven't gone into details a lot with this, but 
when I could not rent. My ultimate goal was going to be, okay, well, how do I make us not homeless? How do I make my family not homeless? I did a shady deal with an older gentleman who was reselling properties. He had tons of properties. He was a really old man, like in his 80s at this point. I had gotten evicted and I had to come up with a plan. I was applying for units. I was applying for apartments. I was applying for houses. I was trying to find a personal renter. I was, I was really in a hole. I was dug so deep in a hole. I didn't know what I was going to do. But when I got the eviction, I got a tax return seven days later. The eviction was finalized. Court addiction, or court addiction, court eviction with a sheriff and all, where they came and stuck something on my door that said, Amanda, you're going to have to exit in two days. You have 48 hours. 72 hours, three days, including the two hours we're going to give you to get your crap out of this apartment. Seven days after that eviction, and we were sleeping at family's house on a floor, I woke up and I called my bank account. I had $12,805 in my bank account after I begged and pleaded the court to give me a chance because I knew I was getting this tax return. This was my child tax credit. This was uh, taxes that I had threw in um, with every paycheck. I was claiming the most amount of taxes I could get taken out of my check because I didn't know any better. I was just told by family, claim the amount that's the highest amount so you don't have to owe. Well, then that meant I had a big chunk. So I, I got my car and I drove in my pajamas. I looked like crap. I drove to figure, find out if I could get back into my apartment. I begged and pleaded. I cried. I cried in, in the car on the way, way back to family's house. They'd give us a, a floor but they wouldn't, wouldn't give us a home, which is understandable. But I just remember being so dead inside. My apartment was already leased to somebody else. I had a court eviction and I had to start looking. So after six, eight months of looking, I purchased a property on a loan, a personal loan. A, one of these kind of deals where you do a handshake Two years later, after everything fell down in an avalanche in my life, everything was messed up. Everything. My relationship, my family relationship, my, my family relationship with my kids, my family relationship with my parents, my family relationship with my uh, to-be in-laws because I had been in a long-term relationship with my, my youngest son's dad. I literally was so desperate. I put down that $12,000 onto that bare piece of property for only two years of living in a travel trailer on that property. I lost it. I lost it because my whole family crumbled. I ended up being the only one out there. I was sick. I had really, really just started to realize how sick I was. I had lost about 50 pounds. I w I'm a very small woman, but I had lost like 40, 50 pounds. I was sick. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I was going to the doctor. Um, I found out that like I had this big goiter in my neck. I had hyperthyroid graves so bad that they had never seen it this bad. I live in Oregon. I was sent to OHSU, 
which is the Oregon University of Health, and it became an emergency and fast. So I could no longer stay at my, my property, my investment. I wasn't going to do it alone. It was too hard. It was off grid. It was 41 miles from the town I lived in from civilization. So I lost $12,000. Then I was sleeping in my car. I had been working fast food and I got a regular customer and he would come in a few days a week. He would watch the stock market on the TV in on the big screen and he's like, I can watch this at home, but I get lonely because I'm older and I'm, I'm my wife's died and I'm just here for a coffee and sausage biscuit and uh, I want, you know, my coffee with cream and he would, he had a notebook. He had a notebook like this one, a little notebook that he would write in. And he had his glasses and the tip of his nose and I would bring him his tray and I'd be like, thank you, sir. Have a good day. And, you know, he would ask me, well, how much do you make an hour here? You know, like what, what, what do you, what are you wanting in life? And I told him, I was like, dude, I don't know what is going on with my life. I don't have a freaking clue. I am almost 30 years old. I'm scared. I'm alone. I'm sleeping in a car. Like I just, it was right before the holidays. I was like, I miss my family. I don't know what I'm going to do without my family. And, uh, he handed me a book from his, his bag. He had a nice book bag, like a leather book bag. He's like, you need this. And it was a book of Dave Ramsey's, uh, baby steps. He's like, follow this. I'm like, I can't do this. I don't even know what this is. I don't know anything about finances. I hadn't ever truly budgeted. I've never stayed on a budget. I was living loose and happy, quote unquote. Buying things with money I didn't have. I didn't have credit cards. I was paying cash for stuff. I was like, you know what, dude? I want to go eat Chinese food after work tonight and even though I am low income sleeping in my car and my dog is my only companion at this point me and Chinese are going to be good friends and I don't care because I'm really sick and I just want to eat food and sleep in my car and come back tomorrow and survive this shift with horrible co-workers mean bosses dirty environment eating greasy gloppy food for lunch. That was my plan. I was so down in the dumps. And he was like, if you don't read it, at least look him up. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll look it up. So I looked it up and I wrote in this book, in this section, I wish I could show you, but there's pages and pages of a credit report I pulled. Okay. I got it from the mortgage lender that I was working with previously when I was trying to buy a house. My first journey trying to buy a house. I was all high and mighty and I was like, I'm going to get my credit report and I don't think it's that bad. Well, I was making less than $30,000 a year, less than $25,000 a year and found out that my total debt and I actually recalculated it out just so I was correct. $10,000. $502.72 in debt. And I laugh at that now. I'm smiling about it now because I don't have it anymore. It's gone because I followed the baby steps to the best I could. Okay. I had an, an, an emergency fund multiple times. I had spent the emergency fund on my car, um, which at the time, I had a dead car. So my car cost me $810 to fix. Um, I had already, my ex had already paid uh, money to fix it, almost $1,000 previous to that. This car was a money pit car from hell. $1,000 car is crap. Okay, we'll be real. So then I had to pay $250 for the tow because it kept doing its thing, one thing after another, transmission, uh, oil pan, um, 
all these different things. I'm not really mechanically inclined. So I can't, I can't recall exactly what was $810. So here I was $10,502 and 72 cents in debt with a piece of crop car with my dog. I was couch surfing. I was sleeping in my car. I was showering in public showers. I was going to a gym where I paid $10 a month. Uh, I won't mention their name, but, uh, you know, if you know, you know, very popular. So after making all these mistakes with a bunch of zeros at the end, I started watching YouTube and I said, I'm going to start watching Dave. And I'm like, this guy is nuts. He's freaking yelling at me. Why is he yelling at me? Like quit yelling at me, Dave. And I'm crying to myself. I watched this one one video and I'm going to leave it in the description. It's called Something Has to Change. I listen to that video every day on my way to work, plugged into my shitty car. And I was like, I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to do it. So then I decided, well, my income's not enough. My income sucks and I'm fixing this car and it's not working. Then my car dies for the final time the final time. I'm rolling into town from out of town, sleeping on, you know, somebody's couch, friend of mine's couch. Yeah, you can stay for the night, Amanda. Come take a shower. Huh. Thank God there's running water somewhere. Uh, and I, I'll never forget this. I rolled into town and I call a friend and he's like, Amanda, this is it. This is it. You're done. We're done with this car you're done with this car. I'm not going to pick you up from the place where we're bringing the car to get fixed. You're leaving it there in their parking lot until we figure out what your driving situation looks like. And I'm like, but I'm in debt. I have this debt to pay. And he's like, as long as you're making a payment, you'll be okay. So I get a car. I get a truck because I'm living off, uh, I'm living off grid still at this point, kind of. I'm actually moving my stuff out. And I'm like, I have to drive deep into, you know, BFE, if you know what that stands for. So, bum, F, Egypt. Um, and I'm trying to get my stuff. And it's the last time this guy's called me. He's He's been nice. He's like, you know, I know this property thing didn't work out, but you can come get your stuff. I'm like, okay. So... I have this truck. I do multiple trips, you know, to, to different places with this truck. I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to be living in this truck. I don't know why I picked a truck, but I wanted this truck so badly because I was like high and mighty and on a, on a roll, you know, cause it's, it was the one good thing that had happened to me in years. Um, and so I drove that truck to one full-time job. It was a retail job. I was ecstatic. I was like, I got a full-time job. I'm a manager at a retail store. I'm not working food. I'm not, not at a call center. I'm working retail. Then I was like, with my car payment and my scribbles in this notebook, I can't pay for all of my debt. How am I going to get out of debt? I gave myself one year. I was like, I need to get the heck out of this car. I'm not going to sleep in this car another Christmas. Okay. So then I got two full-time jobs. Things really started working for me. I was ecstatic. I had two full-time incomes where I could put one paycheck towards my debt every two weeks. One full paycheck. It took me, according to this notebook, because I wrote start to end date, and I was grateful for that. It took me nine months and three weeks to pay off $10,502.72. I traded in my vehicle for a new car because my truck needed maintenance. I couldn't afford the truck. I couldn't afford the maintenance on the truck. Okay, my, my truck payment was up here and I was down here and we were on a soda budget and we were still homeless. No matter how much I wanted, that debt and that video from Dave saying, Amanda, you, you did it. 
got out of debt, you can get back inside now. I paid off all my eviction fees. I paid for the amount I owed from my rent. I paid off all this crappy debt I didn't want. It didn't give me a house. It didn't give me a home. It didn't give me four walls. But I saved this in this notebook. And I'm going to try not to cry while reading this because it meant so much to me that this happened. And I'm hoping I can find this quickly. It's a little, little something to me. This is the last time I utilized this notebook. Dear Amanda in the future, you've got this. Just think in a few days, you get keys. 1210. So 1210 of 2020, I got keys to my apartment. Things will feel normal and you can keep going because it isn't the end. Dreams come, come true when you work hard for them. And I wrote this 1129 of 20. And we are no longer homeless. So, the journey doesn't end there, right? Because you guys have been watching my journey for the last year and a half. And you've seen all of these notebooks, right? You've seen them all. You've seen a, a budgeting notebook just like this one. It's in here somewhere. I don't know where it is. But... The, the final number in 2023 that I'm going to remember is I bought a house for $5,000. I've had to do a lot of repairs. That's why you haven't seen me doing a lot of budgeting. But the repairs have been worth it. It is my shower. It is my washer. Yes, I have a washer. No longer going to the laundromat. I have my own refrigerator. I have my own stove. I have warranties on my appliances. I have purchased this home. I have the title. I have the bill of sale. This is my home. Okay? So in a matter of five years time, if you are feeling down, if you are feeling like you can't do it, just think in five years time, with all of my hard work, I have literally ended homelessness. I ended a long journey of homelessness and I have so many things to regain in my life. But these things that I've gained are priceless. Life lessons, financial knowledge, and how to do with my finances budgeting, sinking funds, emergency fund, all the things. I found out who I did not want to be anymore and I found out who I wanted to be. I learned about people. I learned about who was going to be there for me when it was just me, the wind, and the dog. I found out who my true family was because blood doesn't mean everything. I also learned two big things. A written plan really does matter because when you write it out, there's no doubt that you're going to try to follow that plan. And if you have to revamp that plan, that's okay too. But the biggest one that I still struggle with is the hurry up and wait. Sometimes you have to hurry up and wait for something amazing to happen to you because you are working hard for it and it's not in your time. It's in the universe's time. It's in the timing of all of the things being in the right place at the right time, at the right moment, with the right people and the right person is you. I'm going to end this video with a clip of me 
closing my apartment door for the last time. But just remember, you guys, do what you can with what you got, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.